Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Faster Way to Fat Loss 5-Day Belly Blast. My name is Amanda Tress. I'm the founder and CEO of the Faster Way to Fat Loss. And I'm Alex, the wellness director for the Faster Way to Fat Loss. So, Alex, we are going to talk about my biggest pet peeve in the weight loss space. We are also going to chat about the action items that we want you to implement so that you will thrive through our five-day belly blast. We are going to define intermittent fasting for you and go into just a little bit more depth. When I ask you, have you tried it? I'm really just asking, did you skip breakfast today? Okay. Did you skip breakfast today? If not, we'd like you to skip breakfast tomorrow and extend that fast and shorten your feeding window a little bit. What is your favorite benefit of intermittent fasting? Energy. Ooh. That's usually, I'm working with my brain a lot. Yes. Amanda, I'm seeing patients. I'm trying to figure out labs. I need to have energy. And if I'm sitting all day, that's why I fast because all my energy goes to my brain. Yeah. Okay. That is so true. For me, it's the mental clarity. Yes. It's kind of getting rid of some of that brain fog in yes. the morning. When I first entered into the fitness and nutrition industry, gosh, almost 20 years ago, I was taught that I should eat almost immediately after waking up. It was kind of this mini meals, bro science phenomena that, man, you should wake up by 6.30 or 7. You're having your breakfast meal, that breakfast meal. Then you're having six mini meals throughout the day. Right. And I was sluggish. My, I was like, I was not focused. I wasn't energized in the morning. And then once I discovered intermittent fasting and started skipping breakfast or having that break fast meal a mm -hmm. little bit later in the morning, it's been like absolutely life-changing for me at work. For me too. I love it. I always, I was always sluggish and people eating breakfast at a hospital. It was awful because I had to go see patients. I'm so slow and everybody's so tired. So, but once I start fasting, I just feel so much better. Yeah. Yeah. I love, love it. it. Okay. So we are going to dive into my all-time biggest pet peeve in the weight loss category, and here it is. So it grinds my gears, yeah. okay? When I hear men, dudes, bros <laughs> in my industry say, if you want to lose weight, you simply need to maintain a calorie deficit. Oh, boy. If you want to lose weight, it's calories in, calories out, okay? You just have to eat less and exercise more in order to lose weight. I have worked with now, Alex over 500,000 clients. Wow. You have worked with client after client after client. Yes. Many, many women yes. who have said, listen, I'm only having 1,600 calories a day. Yep. I'm only having 1,200 calories a day. I'm on the elliptical. I'm walking. Yep. I'm running. I'm training for a half marathon. And I can't get rid of the belly fat. Yep. Haven't you experienced this yes, so many times? Yes, absolutely. And for me, seeing patients, I will say, I did not know the answer to that problem. Mm -hmm. I did not, I was not taught that in school. This is why I kept sending you so many of my patients right. because I know you had the solution yeah. and I'm not going to spend a lot of time in research. I have a lot of sick patients that I have to attend to and I knew you had the best solution for me and for my patients and I know it works, Yeah, but there is, there is a rhythm in which you have to do this correctly so you don't burn your hormones. Cause that was a major thing for me. I'm seeing a lot of females in my office and they wanna get pregnant. They want to fix their PCOS. They wanna help with PMS. They have all these hormonal issues and I don't wanna make it worse. I don't wanna make even to the point where they have now low thyroid function. So I really had to recommend something very carefully for these ladies. Yeah, yeah, okay, so here is the deal. Eating less and exercising more is not always the answer. Just this past weekend, I was with some of our best friends and one of my guy friends who I love dearly, just love, love, love him. We're very, very close. He's talking about one of our friends and he's like, oh, so and so they need to eat less. They need. They, and I'm like, listen, that person who's a friend of mine, I'm like, she's not eating a lot. Oh, of course she is. She needs, you know, to lose 100 pounds. She just needs to eat less. And I got so fired up, Alex. <laughs> I was like yelling at my guy friend. I'm like, 
you don't understand. Yeah. I'm like, as a dude, yes. you don't understand. He's like, yeah, I mean, that's it. She should just have six small meals, get her metabolism going. And I'm like, okay, you, I'm like, do you think that you know more than I do? Right. <laughs> I'm like, I am one of the world's leading experts on all things weight loss and fat. I'm like, do you really think? And he's like, well, that's what, you know, I've heard. In the ra-. So it's funny because then the next day I posted on Instagram and I said, one thing I will never tell a female client, especially in midlife, is simply to uh, maintain a calorie deficit oh in order goodness. to lose weight. I said, I'll never say that because there's so much more to it. And then this person online who I – he's just like a troll, like an online troll. He's kind of a jerk. Anything I post, he'll just then go then like in an hour and post the opposite. So <laughs> – Literally posted like multiple different types of diets, keto, intermittent fasting, which intermittent fasting is not a diet, uh, right. carb cycling, blah, 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 Atkins. And he goes, the main reason people lose weight on this is calorie deficit, calorie deficit, calorie deficit, calorie deficit. And then it was funny because one of our scientific advisory board members within 45 minutes of that yeah. posted and said, now when I publish research about fat loss, I add an asterisk, I add a disclaimer that says, uh, if you are a woman in midlife or if you are a woman with an underlying hormonal condition, this might not work for you. Calorie deficit might not work for you, which I thought that spoke volumes of our scientific advisory board member, who, by the way, has a, a a wife who is going through menopause. And so he sees it in his everyday yes. life, yep. personal life, like maybe just eating 1200 calories a day or 800 calories a day isn't the answer. So, you know, this is confusing for many yes, people out there because again, for decades, the weight loss industry has told us that the key to weight loss, the key to, to fat loss is simply maintaining a calorie deficit, where in fact, I know and you know, yep. after m- m- working with literally hundreds of thousands of clients, that there is more to it, okay? So for women in perimenopause, for women in menopause, for women who have PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, for many times women who are breastfeeding, okay? And we got some guys listening to this too. And right. the guys, you know, it's easier for you guys, okay? Yeah. I'm just going to yeah. say, it's it, it's easier. It's more simple. Yeah. Guys are more simple. Absolutely. Congratulations. You can probably just maintain a calorie deficit. You're good to go. Good to go. That's great. Many of my male clients, they just stop drinking Coke and they drop 40 pounds. I don't understand it. You're lucky ducks. For us women, there's more to it. Yes. Okay. We are wonderful, beautiful, powerful, complicated, complicated. <laughs> creatures. Yes. And so let's talk a little bit about why some of us women yeah. who are listening to this training, we have fat loss resistance. Let's yes. let's just share maybe a couple of the components. And then what we're going to do is discuss the the to-dos, the action items for you. So what are some of these reasons for fat loss resistance? So what I find, and the thing with me, Amanda, I end up seeing so many females in my office from age of 15 all the way up to 65, 70, or 80, women struggling with the weight. And the thing that we kind of forget in science, and a lot of scientists don't study this, is the cycles that we go through. Like you said, we are very complex creatures. So we cycle our hormones in a 28-day cycle. We have ups and downs of progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone, thyroid hormones. It all fluctuates all the time throughout the day. There's actually some studies showing the progesterone cycles throughout the day, and it can go up and down. And progesterone is one of those hormones. That was like, it's a diuretic hormone, so it helps with weight loss. So what happens is with women, and I feel like You know, I've been doing this for, what, 20 years now. I've been just working with women. And one of the things that I see that that was what I was very scared about was low calorie intake consistently. So most of those patients that would come to me with low thyroid function, by the time they would get to my office, they have very low thyroid function and did not lose any weight. Why? Because for me, what I understand from hormones is exactly the cycles as cortisol go up in the morning. The melatonin, of course, goes goes up, melatonin goes down. And as you fast, that's the other thing. People, they have this idea still of having breakfast in the morning and have the cereal in the morning. First thing that happens when you do that, you spike your insulin. 
And then when you have that first spike in the morning, now you're hungry. Within, I would ask my clients all the time, what happens after half an hour of having cereal? They will tell me, I'm hungry. Then I'll eat again. Then I'll have a dinner. And then what happens after that? Then I'm hungry again. So and then you just keep going after that. And you keep chasing that because you keep chasing the energy. And that racks your hormones, okay? So that's the first thing that happens is the insulin spike. More insulin you have, less hormones you have, less progesterone you have, less ovulation occurs. Now with less ovulation, it, there's a harder time for you to get pregnant. It's a harder time for you to balance your menstrual cycle. Now you're bleeding even more. Now I have low iron. And if you have low iron, now your thyroid goes down. And this can go on and on and on for ages, mm -hmm. sometimes for 10 to 20 years by yep. the time I have somebody in my office. So what I tell people is, yes, we are very complex, but the first place to start to take control over this is the insulin hormone, because it's exactly what happens with insulin. It holds on to fat exactly in the belly area. So that's the first step. That's why the American Heart Association, it li they like to have these parameters for females to have a waist less than 35 inches and I think males less than 40 inches because they know that leads to metabolic syndrome, which is high blood pressure and all the other things that comes with heart disease and all the things. So we know it starts with insulin and we have to take care of that. And a lot of times, Amanda, what I see with my clients is that they get the lab results back and everybody tells them it's normal, but it's not because you can look at them. You can just look at your patient or yourself and you, you, cause you come to me and you say, I don't feel like this is right for me. My doctor said that it's okay, but I don't feel, and you're right. You're absolutely right. And there's something you can do about it. And I feel like we do have the tools for you to get ahead of the game so you don't develop a problem. So you don't develop even more problem with your hormones or your blood pressure or so many other things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so many of our clients are in perimenopause, menopause, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond. Yeah. But I speak from experience as someone who was on blood pressure medication at the age of 16, 17, because I did have a metabolic disorder. I had polycystic ovary syndrome, and then I ended up struggling to conceive. I was on uh, conception medications, fertility medications to conceive my first two babies. Then I created the faster way to fat loss and naturally conceived my third fourth and fifth. Uh, and so, you know, as someone who is currently in my 30s, I can relate with you if you say, man, I am in my 20s, 30s, and there is some fat loss resistance. So fat loss is all about the insulin response. And you mentioned that many people have been taught to, again, wake up, eat breakfast early in the morning. Uh, it's just embarrassing. But, you know, 20 years ago, I would tell my clients, I'm like, have mini wheats, have wheat thins, have da 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 you know, low fat yogurt and it's just so full of sugar. Yeah. Oh, just uh, terrible that I would ever recommend that. But right. that's what, you know, and then it was Subway sandwiches for right, lunch because right, that's right. what the biggest loser was promoting. Yes. And every, we would all go to Subway. It was just terrible. And so, you know, if fat loss is all about the insulin response, then we have to be very cognizant of that. Not to mention that for women in perimenopause or menopause specifically, there is a lot of insulin resistance, just like what I dealt with when I had polycystic ovary syndrome and couldn't seem to get rid of the midsection fat, even though I was exercising in the gym alongside my clients like a maniac. Right. So, um, so you mentioned the insulin, you mentioned the suboptimal thyroid yes. function, which many times we can bring upon ourselves. We actually run ourselves out of hormones. And again, if you're younger, 20s, 30s, we want to empower you this week with the foundational strategies that will help you mitigate some of these issues yes. down the road. Yes, that's my big thing. And I feel like a lot of nurse practitioners, we work from the point of view of prevention. Mm -hmm. So I like to have a young client start working now. If you're 20, 25, and you see your mom did struggle with something or your sister, it's the time for you to start now your journey, learn about your body and how you should eat. Because it sounds like it's something for midlife, but it's not. It's like, I feel like this is a major epidemic in this country yeah. and we can actually do something about it because it costs so much money for healthcare to treat these conditions later on in life. And once we learn the process in which we can help our bodies, we can prevent all of these things. How many people like you 
you have helped that has been now off of blood pressure medication. Because let me tell you something, a lot of these blood pressure medications, they're so, so necessary. If you have to take them, you have to take them. But they also aren't very toxic. So we are taught in school that sometimes we have to switch medications because nobody teaches the client to work on their basis, on their diet, on their exercise. So they end up never getting off of those prescription drugs. Yeah. And it's a very, so everybody talks about on social media, Amanda, about toxics, right? And, and lead and cadmium and arsenic and this and that. But I feel like we forget to talk about prescription medicine which is needed, I understand that. But if you do the work now, you can get ahead of the game and then you prevent all of these things. Yeah. So yeah, it's absolutely, now in midlife, things are a little bit different. It's a little bit harder. We understand that. I'm 50 now, so I totally understand. I get it. So because what happens in midlife, Amanda, is we lose our hormones, okay? So now our progesterone is low, estrogen is low. It's just how it works. And because that happens, we tend to have more inflammation and we have tend to have less bone mass and muscle mass. Yeah. And now you have even more insulin resistance. So if you did not work, if you did not get ready for menopause or perimenopause, it's going to be a little harder. You still can do it, but you have to be a little patient with yourself because it, you can't change your body composition again. You just have to put the work. But I'm begging you, even if you don't have any symptoms, not everyone has symptoms with perimenopause, which is fine. That's great. But you can prevent so many things. Sometimes you look at your family history and you see, oh, yeah, my mom, she didn't develop X, Y, and Z until she was 65. So if you're 50 now, it's the time for you to start working out your muscles and prevent that insulin resistance that can possibly happen in the future. Yeah. I'm all about that. 100%. I'm all about prevention. Yeah. So you might already be overwhelmed. We've talked about how simply maintaining a calorie deficit is not the answer to sustainable weight loss. We've chatted about insulin resistance, suboptimal thyroid, uh, or hypothyroidism, which many people struggle with. Uh, but but here's the deal. There are answers. Okay, yeah. so we are going to give you the exact plan to follow as we go through the next five days and beyond. Many of you are going to have incredible, most of you are going to have incredible results by Friday and Saturday. You will then transition into our six-week Faster Way to Fat Loss program for new clients. Uh, but this is the very first thing that we want you to do this week. We want you to try intermittent fasting. Now, intermittent fasting is not a diet. It is simply an eating schedule. And typically what it looks like is that you are going to skip that breakfast meal early in the morning. You're going to push back that first meal of the day. Personally, what I do is I break my fast around 11 or noon. Prior to that, I drink black coffee, water, sometimes a little scoop of collagen. I will break my fast around 11 or noon, and then I'm going to stop eating personally around 6.30 or 7. Okay, that is when I have my final bite of food. Then I'm going to drink some water just a little bit in the evening. I don't want to be waking up three times a night, right. but I go to bed. I wake up the next morning. I drink lots of water. I get the kids out the door for school. I get myself ready. I go to work, and I'm not eating again until 11 or noon. So I have 16 hours of digestive rest and eight hours, seven or eight hours of eating or feeding. Okay, so this is what we want you to try as you go through the five-day belly blast. And you already shared yes. some of your favorite aspects of intermittent yes. fasting. Yes, you're going to get some energy. Your brain's going to be sharp. And as you get used to it, sometimes people some people have an easier time doing it. Some people have a little bit of a hard time doing it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, this is beneficial for you. It causes your body to just get rid of toxins gives digestive rest, which I think it's so important you said that. Yeah. A lot of people with gut issues these days because they just keep consistently eating preservatives and fake foods yeah. and you never give yourself enough rest. This is so, so, so important. It's the healthiest thing you can do for your, like naturally without spending any any supplements or any drugs or anything, asking your doctor for any permission, this is an easy thing to do. And your body can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, there is a lot of confusion and misinformation all of the internet about intermittent fasting. And there is research that says intermittent fasting is negative for women. Mm -hmm. But the, the studies that would say this are 
five-day yes. fast. Yes. Every other day, 24-hour fast. Yes. Some women who have underlying conditions should start with more of a 12-12 protocol where you fast for 12 hours, only eat for 12 hours. Perhaps you have adrenal fatigue. Perhaps you do have hypothyroidism, and that's fine. We want you to get to the point where you can extend that fast a little bit longer to, say, 14 hours, 16 hours, but there's no one-size-fits-all answer Perfect, as yeah. you begin. Yes. So definitely be cognizant as you start intermittent fasting. The second strategy that we want you to do this week is to try our workouts. Okay, we want you to try our workouts. Now today I led a high-intensity interval training workout. Tomorrow we have a HIIT workout as well. Wednesday, we have a total body strength workout, as well as Thursday, an upper body strength. Friday, we do a really fun core circuit, which is going to be effective. And then for everyone who joins our six-week program, we have a Saturday leg day, which is my favorite day of the week yeah. <laughs> because we also have a little treat. Uh, but the workouts are key. Let's talk a little bit about muscle and okay. why muscle is the key to longevity. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Now, that's another thing you see all over the social media. People are talking talk about muscle. Yep. Why? This is something I, I tell people, let's go back in time and think about in terms of our farmers, our ancestors. So the human body was actually meant to support a lot more weight and strength than we do today. So our genetics haven't changed that much in 100 years or 50 years. So we're just very, very sedentary. All our professions, all the things that we do is sitting behind the desk. So it makes sense that the organ that takes most of the, the work of the insulin is your muscles. Now, the muscles are not working out, not doing anything. Of course, your insulin is just going to build up. So it's so important, especially also for women getting in menopause or perimenopause to start building those muscles, because this is something that I would be very, very concerned about my clients in the office was the loss of muscle mass, not only because that leads to loss of bone health, but also because they, they tend to fall a lot easier because they lose balance. They, they're no longer strong that they think they are. And the next thing you know, they're traveling, they're carrying a luggage and they fall, they break a hip, they're calling me and like they need all kinds of things. So you have to think about these things. It's not just about, yes, we talk about the weight loss. Yes, but you're going to get so many benefits from my point of view, right? Because I remember I am coming from the medical point of view. I know you're interested in losing belly fat, which is totally going to happen but all the other benefits that you're going to get from this is just is just incredible yeah. you just you're going to love it it's so entertaining yeah and also. to loop back to the beginning of our discussion again you know many dietitians or brosifs who who you know follow particular methodology methodology they'll just say okay maintain a calorie deficit and you'll lose weight the truth is you will lose weight if you underconsume okay yeah. if if you chronically have a calorie deficit you will, at least in the beginning, lose weight, but so much of that is muscle. We have done a couple podcasts on weight loss shots. Now, there are a lot of different opinions on weight loss shops like Ozempic and Wagovi and the semi-glutides, the GLP-1s, the triceptides. But, but in many cases, and this is what the research shows, you are losing up to 30, even 40% of muscle because with these weight loss shots, which are appetite suppressants, you're consuming 900 calories, 1,000 calories, 1,100 calories. And I often say, let's reverse engineer a little bit. I want to live till I'm 100. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I want to live till I'm 100, but I don't want to live till I'm 100 if I don't have muscle, I know. if I don't have the ability to walk up the stairs yes. or to get up off the floor to hug my grandkids and my yeah. great grandkids. Okay. I want muscle. I want the strength and the power and the endurance as I am aging and so this is a perfect transition into our next core component that we want you to follow this week. It is our sample meal plan because the key to building muscle and in turn burning fat is eating enough of the right whole foods. Okay, so we have a wonderful sample meal plan that we want you to follow. I'm going to be following it to a T as we go through the five-day belly blast. I love our meal plans. Yeah. We want you to take a look at that meal plan. It's in your app. You got it via email and text. You can print it out. The meals are fall-inspired recipes as well. I think there's a peach cobbler oh, smoothie nice. on the docket, protein shake on the docket for today. 
you are going to be shocked at how much food you should and can consume per hour sample meal plan throughout your feeding window. Okay. Many of you are going to say, oh my gosh, I'm actually full right? because I'm having so many good carbs, fats, and proteins. Uh, and, and protein and fat especially is very satiating. Yes. So you're going to say, Amanda, I'm actually eating more than I have in the past decade, in the past 20 years. And the coolest part is four weeks from now, you're going to message me on Instagram and say, the fat is melting off my stomach. I right. do not understand. Yeah. I'm eating more food than I have. Like, I know. Like, why and how does that happen, Alex? It's insane. <laughs> it's insane. The difference that makes when you switch to whole food nutrition, of course, you get all the nutrients, mm -hmm. but you're getting the fiber. You're teaching your body what's real food. Now the cells understand when they get the nutrients, when they get the B12, when they get the zinc, when they get the the all the uh, antioxidants. Now the cells know what to do. It's naturally going to lower your inflammation, which is also going to help with insulin. So it's a combination of all these things. There, there's, there's a reason why Amanda has the the way she has the program because it works, everything works in conjunction. My thing that I was so afraid, Amanda, in the office when fasting, when people start talking about fasting was what you said, because people would not eat. Yeah. Or sometimes they would eat one meal a day. And I was so, so afraid for these people because eventually you will no longer be able to sustain that. And then you start having, yes, thyroid problems. Your hair starts to falling out. And of course, your body will give you symptoms, but you keep pushing because you believe you're losing fat, but you're also losing muscle. To your point, yes, we have the drugs, but we also have the natural starvation that people do. So so that's one of them. The um, bariatric surgery is another one. You would benefit if you already had bariatric surgery. This is a great program yeah. because you can work out your muscles now mm -hmm. and you can actually eat whole food nutrition, which is going to feed your body more than in any other type of food before. And you able because I've used to see these clients in my office a lot and they struggle with fatigue. They just don't have no, enough energy and they were never told what to eat. Mm -hmm. They would come to me because they, I don't know what to eat. I right. don't want to gain all the weight back. What do I do? Like you need to eat whole food nutrition, but you also need to work out those muscles so you can keep that insulin down, not just not eating anything at all. This is this is a very responsible thing that we do here. I think that's that's what gives credibility to what we do. We don't want anybody starving. We don't want to create any more issues for your thyroid or your hormones. We want to make sure this is sustainable for you yeah. and you're not starving. Yes. So we want you to try intermittent fasting. We want you to do our workouts this week. We also want you to take a look at that sample meal plan. Use the recipes in the sample meal plan. I guarantee you're going to love them, as is your family. And finally, we want you to drink water. Okay. We want you to hydrate as we go through this week. Now, I usually recommend drinking half of your body weight in ounces of water. For me, that's at least 60 ounces of water. I see you have our fast race Stanley right here. Yes. You're drinking water. <laughs> Just starting. I'm trying to keep up, Amanda. I, <laughs> I usually have at minimum 20 ounces of water before I leave the house. In oh, the wow, yeah. And then I- That's the way to do it to black coffee for most of the morning, I'll be honest, and then kind of make my way back to water throughout the afternoon. I have a huge Stanley when I'm sitting in the sauna at night as well. Hydration is absolutely key. Many times we wake up in the morning and we think that we're hungry, where in fact we are simply dehydrated. Yeah. Okay, keep that in mind. The same signal that tells your brain that you are hungry tells your brain that you are dehydrated. So we mistake yeah. this dehydration for hunger be sure that you drink water first. It is going to make a huge difference. Yeah. We also have a hydration product that gives you important minerals yes. and vitamins. So definitely take a look at our hydration electrolyte product. Okay. We've given you a lot of homework assignments as you go through the five-day belly blast, but I want to leave you with this note. There is hope for you. Okay, maybe you're coming into the five-day faster way to fat loss belly blast after trying other programs yeah. that left you feeling depleted or discouraged because you didn't see sustainable results, but there is hope for you. Okay, in the faster way to fat loss, we are here for you. Our program is clinically proven. In fact, our app is the most researched fitness app on the market, period, end of story. And your satisfaction is our guarantee. Will it be easy? No. Will it be simple and straightforward? Yes. yes. 
intermittent fasting, whole food nutrition via the sample meal plan, try these workouts and drink water. Yeah. Okay, that's what we really want you to focus on. As you transition into the six-week program, we're going to have more things to train you on and for you to learn, macro tracking, carb cycling. But this week, let's keep it simple. Let's keep it nice and basic. We know that you are going to thrive and we cannot wait to hear your wins as we journey through the week. Bye, everyone. Bye.